Morning friends and happy Mountain Monday. Today we are going to be hiking a hike that I've been trying to do for many years, but the pieces have never come together for me to go and do this. But today is the day, you might have heard of this hike before, we are hiking Flatiron out in the Superstition Mountains. Right now we're driving out to Lost Dutchman State Park, which is where the Siphon Draw Trail starts out from and it makes an absolutely brutal ascent up this face of the superstitions. Once we're on top of the mountain, from what I hear, it's epic panoramic views after you basically have to rock climb up a brutal face of rock. This is gonna be an epic hike today, guys. Please stick around and join me for this adventure. Let's get going on it. Siphon Draw Trailhead is located within Lost Dutchman State Park. It's a $10 entry fee per vehicle to get into the park. You can also buy a State Parks Pass for $80 and that's good for a full year. So if you're going to visit any of Arizona's state parks more than eight times in a given year, it pays for itself. You might want to consider that instead of just buying the day pass, which costs, as I said, $10. A mask is required to get into the park just to keep everyone safe, both the rangers and you. But on the trail, people didn't really seem to care as much, so just come prepared. And currently, due to COVID precautions, they're keeping it at 50% capacity, so keep that in mind when planning your hike. On weekends, you may want to show up a little bit earlier. For our hike, we went on Friday about midday, and we didn't have many issues. So if it's the middle of the week, you might not have to worry as much. But more on that in a little bit. Even from a distance, it's pretty apparent that this mountain range had some crazy stuff happen to it to make it be created. I actually talked a little bit about this in my Arizona Trail through hike when I was passing through this area. And if you click that link in the upper right there, you'll be able to see that video and a little bit of an explanation about it. But let's go over it again. Between 18 and 25 million years ago, this whole mountain range was actually a super volcano and it blew its top. The type of magma that came out of it was high in silica, which made the magma extremely viscous. So instead of an oozing volcano, like what you see in Hawaii, it basically blew its top off and popped, throwing boulders and huge chevy size balls of magma over 30 miles away. If you're driving up the beeline towards Payson, all the boulders that you can see close to Four Peaks those all came from this eruption. This same eruption is also what created the geological features of Weaver's Needle and Picket Post Mountain, as well as Flatiron. It lifted the earth so violently, the rocks literally turned vertically. A lot of the really unique geology you see, such as these huge stone pillars, are direct evidence of this cataclysm. It's kind of amazing to see it firsthand. The steep walls seen from this trail are caused from what is known as a resurgent dome, where the magma pushed up from beneath, and instead of collapsing, this shoved all of the rock straight up. The Siphon Draw Trail gently approaches the foot of the mountain and slowly makes its way into a canyon, where at the head you can see Flatiron in all of its glory. From the trailhead to the top of the Flatiron, it's about three miles and you gain almost 3,000 feet of elevation over this three miles. So needless to say, it's steep. The trail progressively gets steeper and steeper as you climb your way up, and in some areas it may be a little hard to follow, as it seems some people decided it's a create-your-own-adventure sort of trail. Despite the signs saying, please stay on the trail, it forks in quite a few places, but generally speaking, you're just following the creek up the mountain. Once you're about halfway up the mountain, you come to what is known as the basin, which is a large rock bowl 
where you can see all these waterfalls coming down, or what would be waterfalls if there would be rain. 2021 and late 2020 have proven to be unseasonably dry. It is in this area that you begin to transition from the alluvial plain from this draw, so where all the water comes down and deposits the dirt and sand from the mountain range into the bedrock. At the top of this steep incline, it gets dusty and rocky, and eventually the trail just follows the bottom of a creek as you climb your way up and over boulders, using trees, rocks, and whatever you can to get up the steep canyon. As it gets more and more steep, you need to be very aware of people climbing above and below you as rocks can fall down because it is that steep and it can cause a lot of damage to you or others. So if you kick a rock, definitely yell out rocks so those below you are, can know and can get out of the way. It could be a very dangerous situation. And being this is such a popular hike, there are a lot of people out here and that makes the danger even more. So please be aware, especially out in this area, as it is a wilderness area and rescue is very slow and difficult, not to mention expensive. About halfway through the climb, it's getting a little crazy. Here's the trail. So I just came up. It's a little bit of rock climbing, a little bit of a scramble. And I get to go down that to go up that uh, little drainage to the left side of Flat Iron, which is right there. Whew. It's a bit of a tough hike, guys, but so far it's been pretty rewarding. Some great views of the valley, some great views of uh, the Superstition's awesome geology. Got a little bit of a late start today and that was a little warm starting out. It was about 75. I couldn't imagine trying to do this in the summer, so keep note of that. Don't do it in the middle of the summer. This will this will be a killer. It's absolutely gorgeous though. If uh, you feel you got the skill to do it, I'd I'd highly recommend it. I think it's the hardest three mile hike I've ever been on though. <laughs> Ooh, we started at 1.30 and now it's uh, 3.20. So been hiking for almost two hours now. And uh, as you can see, just that far. <laughs> uh, Lord, <laughs> wish me luck. All right, friends, another little update for you. We got started a little too late today. It's uh, 1 p.m. or we got started at 1.30 p.m., excuse me. And now it is uh, 3.40. It's gonna start getting a little dark on us. As you can see behind me, that's the whole valley. We've just been climbing and we still got a long ways to go up there. And it's a little bit of like scrambling and free climbing coming up here. And I don't wanna go back down this in the dark. So I kinda got too late of a start today. So if you're gonna hike this, give yourself a whole day, get an early start so you can take it nice and slow. Even though it says it's only three miles up there, it's a uh, deceptive three miles. It's slow going and it's really overgrown, a lot of scrambling, a lot of route finding, kind of a choose your own adventure sort of deal. So we're not gonna quite make it on top of Flatiron today, sadly. Gonna have to come back and give it another go in the future. But that's okay, it's been a great hike today and saw some beautiful sights. Met some cool people, and it's always good to get out into the mountains and enjoy it a little bit. So, hope you guys enjoyed this little hike. We're going to start on our way down now, though. Sadly, didn't make it to the peak. Next time. Next time. Let's go. While it is quite the bummer that we didn't make it all the way to the peak, it's good to learn a lesson and appreciate the mountains and be humbled by them. You don't tame the mountains. The mountains tame you. That's what I said when I completed the Arizona Trail. That was one of the big takeaways from that 800 mile journey. And it was humbling for a three mile hike to force me to turn around. Sure, it was due to our late start, not due to my physical ability, but it's important to take these things seriously so that you don't end up in a situation where you're at risk or you might be hurt. No one's invincible. We're all made out of the same stuff. The mountains teach us these valuable lessons and it's important to listen to them and not get all upset with ourselves or get flustered because we didn't make it to that mountain, or throw a hissy fit about it or anything. 
It was a beautiful day that had some beautiful challenges in it. My only advice to you is bring plenty of water and get an early start on this trip because it will kick your butt. Take it from an 800 mile through hiker. This hike is some serious business. I'll be back there again real soon. Well, friends, we uh, survived that hairy descent down the mountain. These mountains are just gorgeous. And we're so lucky that these mountains are so close to the valley. And we're also so lucky that it was one of the first areas in Arizona that was declared as a wilderness area. It's pretty awesome. That was in the Arizona Wilderness Act of 1984, declared superstition wilderness, as well as several other wildernesses throughout the state absolutely beautiful now just doing the little walk back to the car there's the soups behind me made it out safely i'm glad that i'm not going down that steep stuff in this darkness i did have a headlamp and some extra clothes with me just uh, as a precautionary measure in case i got stuck out there for some reason always a good idea to pack the 10 essentials i'll leave a link down below if you want to read up on those a little bit yeah, it's been a great adventure today. Sadly, didn't make it to the top, but I think we made the right, claw, right call to come back uh, a little bit early just so we weren't in the darkness going down the slippery stuff. But it's been a beautiful day. Thanks so much for joining me on this adventure. And thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, hit that like button down there. And if you felt that I earned it, hit that subscribe button so you can be here my future adventures, gear review, all those sorts of things. Thanks again for watching today's video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay groovy.